This ain't your ordinary football show. It's the Old Dominion Football Show with Bruce Rader and Coach Bobby Wilder. Brought to you by Priority Automotive. Expectations for schools like Alabama, Oregon, and Ohio State. The expectation is for those schools to win every game they play. For Old Dominion in its transition year moving up to Conference USA, everyone expects them to easily run the table against their seven FCS opponents while being kicked around by the bigger FBS teams they played thus far, East Carolina, Maryland, and Pitt. But expectations are not always met, especially in sports. Let's talk about that. The Old Dominion football show starts now. I'm Bruce Rader along with Coach Bobby Wilder on the heels of la that last second win mm -hmm. at Norfolk State. Really, your expectations are the <laughs> only ones that matter. So what are they and mm -hmm. are they being fulfilled? Our expectations each week are to win the game. So we'd like to be 8-0 right now. But realistically, in this transition year, that's a challenge. We're, we're a program that's 5-3. and three. We're 5-0 and oh against the FCS teams, we're 0-3 versus the FBS teams, and what's been the challenge for this team this year is that in those FCS games, the expectation is we'll win 76-19 like we did with Howard, or we'll win 66-10 like we did against Albany. And that's not the case because we're getting teams' best games. I felt like we got Norfolk State's best game, and we didn't play as well as we're capable of, so we've got to stay focused on the process, Bruce. There was a sign on campus this week in regards to focus. I'm mm -hmm. guessing that you printed that <laughs> <laughs> poster there. Can you share with us your thought process behind that? Yeah, what we've talked a lot about, Bruce, and this started leading up to the Norfolk State game after the Pittsburgh game, is to focus on the process of winning. And what we mean by that is the planning, the preparation, and the execution. Those are all what leads to winning, whether it's in football or whether it's having success in life. You, you've got to plan properly. You've got to stay focused on planning in football to play an opponent. And then the preparation is everything that happens throughout the week. The practices on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, studying your game plan. And then the execution is when you get out there on Saturday, you've got to execute. That's how you win is being successful in that regard. And successful organizations, whether it's sports, or whether it's a business, have that focus on the process of winning. And that's really what we're trying to get this football team to understand. And trust me, it's a process right and now. And as we learn year after year, mm -hmm. college sports, especially college football, is right. big business. You were coming off an impressive game at Pitt. You were uh, facing a mm -hmm. struggling Norfolk State team that most of your fans thought you were just going to blow out of the water. Mm -hmm. How big a wake-up call was that game Saturday? Oh, I think everybody in our organization realized that if we're not focused on that process of winning, if we don't get on the field and, and when the official blows a whistle and the game starts, have the right mindset, we can lose to anybody. Now, I felt just the opposite the week before we went to Pittsburgh. I felt like our focus was there. Every part of our organization, everybody was focused on that process. And we go from playing in Heinz Field against Pittsburgh, and then we travel over to Norfolk State, we go and play a Pittsburgh team that probably wasn't that excited to play us, and then we go play a Norfolk State team that you can tell we weren't as excited to play. They were fired up. They were excited. And I give a lot of credit to Norfolk State, Bruce. Their preparation, their planning, their execution, they were focused on winning that game. And fortunately for us, we were able to do just enough to win that football game. You were their pit. Now, every week we see different players in key positions. Gerard mm -hmm. Johnson, a very good example. More and more young players getting on the field. Is this part of your transition season mm -hmm. strategy? It is, Bruce. It's interesting because there are 11 seniors that we're trying to make sure we find a role for. And now you're looking at 11 true freshmen that we're trying to find a role for. So here's the veteran players that have been here. Here are the new players, and we're trying to get roles for everybody. Gerard Johnson has been playing throughout the season, but we felt like based on what his progress had been, he deserved more of an opportunity to get some reps in a game situation. And this really started during the bye week, Bruce, before the Pittsburgh game and seeing his development, what he had done. And then you see him go in this game, 17 carries for 105 yards, some key catches particularly on that late touchdown drive. This is another freshman that has grabbed that opportunity to perform when the lights are bright. This is a one-year opportunity. It's right. not a luxury, playing right. all these freshmen. is mm -hmm. this? Can this continue next season once you get into Conference USA? Philosophically, we'll always have the mindset that the best 11 are going to play. The best 11 are going to be on the field, whether it's a special team, defense, or offense. What you hope happens 
is your best 11 players maintain that level of consistency. And then you can find roles for your backups. Right now, we're still trying to find those combination of, of who the best 11 players are. Now, you mentioned the transition, which is a good point by you. We are transitioning. We're going from FCS to FBS. So we're trying to find the players right now, that mix of new players. We have one class that was recruited as FBS, and we've got four classes that were recruited as FCS. We're trying to find that, that medium between the two. Who are the players that can play at this high level? Even the players we recruited previously as FCS players. And we've got a lot of them, Bruce, and we've got kids right now, they are competing, they're practicing hard, they're trying to get better each week, but it's really interesting to see right now those players in this transition and how they're performing. So there's something to be said for this transition season. Mm -hmm. The Old Dominion defense continues to improve, and yet another local player from Phoebus High School, true freshman Richie Staten, is helping to lead the way, and Chris Reckling joins us with his story. Around the Old Dominion campus, Richie Staten blends in, and he likes it like that, on his own, away from home, his own man. The best thing about it is probably not living at home. You, know, you get to make your own decisions, Hopefully they're always the best decisions and I mean you get to experience for the first time being an adult. But so far this season the true freshman has done anything but blend in on the football field. At middle linebacker he started every game this season and he's second on the team in tackles. No matter how good you play or especially on defense no matter how good you play or anything it's never going to be enough. So there's always more to do. Prior to coming to Old Dominion, Staten struggled to keep his grades up at Phoebus High School, but give the Monarchs coaching staff credit for staying on Staten and offering him his only scholarship. Yeah, they were definitely, they definitely stayed on me about keep getting my grades up, even if I didn't, even if I didn't end up here. They always came to talk to me about staying out of trouble, and, and it, it, it all sunk in. He's a middle linebacker, and of course, Staten packs a mean punch, but he's also taken his share and they're much harder in college. The difference is you can feel that people are not like, you can feel the muscle now. You can feel how much they're lifting when they bring it. Right? When they hit you, when they really want to hit you, they can really hit you. While Staten is still undecided on what he wants to do as a student, he's certain what he likes to do when he puts on the pads. Oh, I always look for big hits. I, I got to practice every day after practice with wrapping up and all that stuff, because I always try to go for the big hit. Reporting from Norfolk, Chris Reckling for the Old Dominion Football Show. Coach Richie seems to have had a, has a big future as a Monarch. He does, Bruce, in, in the eight games he's played so far. Keep in mind now, true freshman, he's been our starting middle linebacker all season going back to East Carolina, Maryland. He's got 54 tackles, so he's averaging about seven tackles a game, four sacks, which leads our team, and he's really battled through some injuries, Bruce. He's, he's physically beat up right now, but he shows up every day with a great attitude. I'm really proud of him so far, what he's done. Still to come, Aaron Evans' punt return against Liberty is a big reason the Monarchs are undefeated at home, but now the senior from Newport News faces another challenge as he enters the one-minute drill with Brian Parsons, and we'll get Coach Wilder's priorities of the game for tomorrow afternoon's showdown against the Rhode Island Rams. Welcome back, senior Aaron Evans has seen a lot in his time at Old Dominion, but now comes one of his tougher nights as he takes on Brian Parsons uh -oh. in the One Minute Drill. Here we go. All right, welcome back to the One Minute Drill. We have Aaron Evans, cornerback from Woodside High School in Newport News. Welcome to the One Minute Drill. How you doing? Welcome. Doing great. What is your favorite post-game meal? Post-game meal, uh, probably my mom's fried chicken and some mac macaroni and cheese. If you're from Newport News, you could probably you could get that after a game. Yeah, uh, sometimes when my mom feels like cooking, you know, sometimes she doesn't feel like doing all that. Do you watch reality television? Uh, no, sometimes. Which ones do you watch when you sometimes watch? Um, the Love and Hip Hop and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Have you ever celebrated an end zone dance? We saw Andre Simmons try that. Uh, no, coach told me I had to hand the ball to the ref and get back to the sideline, so I won't get in trouble. <laughs> Have you played Old Dominion on EA Sports? Yes, I play with them all the time. Uh, matter of fact, I was just playing before media day, actually. Have you lost yet? 
Yeah, I lost because uh, I moved myself to the ODU to the SEC, so I lost to Alabama the first week of the season. One step at a time here. Conference USA first, SEC maybe later. My first year, I won the national championship, so I just said, hey, let's move to the SEC, and that was a bad idea. Hey, aim high, right? <laughs> aim high. All right, hey, you passed the one-minute drill, Aaron. Say goodbye to the Monarch Nation. Thank you. All right, y'all have a good day. <laughs> ODU and the SEC, boy, talk about aiming high, Coach. Aaron has really got us aiming high. Bruce, interesting thing uh, about Aaron, one of our seniors, uh, he's the only player in Old Dominion history that's returned a kickoff for a touchdown and a punt for a touchdown. You mentioned in that intro the Liberty game. Without that punt return, we probably don't win. I'll tell you what, special teams can win games. They sure or can. Or have a big part of those wins. When we come back... We open up a mailbag for this week's Coach's Corner and a final look ahead to tomorrow's game against Rhode Island. Time to turn it over to you fans. It's time for the latest installment of the Coach's Corner. First question, Coach, is from Taylor in Norfolk. What area in the country do you think has the most high school football talent that is ready for mm -hmm. college? Based on the statistics, Bruce, year in and year out, Texas and Florida are the two big ones. Last year in Texas alone, 354 FBS players were signed to full scholarships in Florida, 333. Now, we're in both of those states recruiting. Also, I should mention California's third. Not included in these statistics are the junior college players in California. And as our fans know, players like Thomas DeMarco have been instrumental to our program. Thanks for the question. Next question from Elza in Virginia Beach. How do you determine who your team captains are? That's a great question. It, it goes back to our aim high philosophy and we're always trying to develop good people, good students, good players. And we look to veteran players on the team, not necessarily seniors, but veteran players on the team that represent well on campus, that do well academically, and have success on the football field. That's how we come up with our captains. Another good question. All right, Coach, what are your priorities of the game for tomorrow's contest against Rhode Island? The number one priority is to focus on that process of winning. We keep talking about planning, preparation, execution. It needs to be much better this week than it was last week. Number two, uh, 28 days since we've been home. That's how long it's been since we've seen the 12th Monarchs at SB Ballard. So we're real excited. Need to get the 12th Monarchs into the game early. And number three, create some opportunities with turnovers. We have not had a turnover from either Pittsburgh or Norfolk State. We're due to get some turnovers from our defense. Those are the priorities for this week's game. Coach, 10 seconds. Tell us about Rhode Island. Yeah, Rhode Island's a team that uh, they've got three wins this season, didn't win at all last year, playing much better as a football team. Bruce, defensively, different look. 4-2-5, inverted safeties. We've got to be prepared for that. And then offensively, they run the pistol, a lot of options. So those are things we'll have to be smart with early in the game. All right, Rhode Island, tomorrow at 2 o'clock, SB Ballard Stadium. See you there. See you, 12th Monarchs.